Good morning, First Baptist. This is our first online Sunday school class. I'd like to tell you that I miss all of you and I love you. And uh, I understand now why God said, do not forsake the assembling together because there are many things that we're missing here. Uh, it's just a new experience for us. But uh, I would just like to say good morning to you again and, and we love you. Uh, today, I'm gonna open up in a word of prayer and then we'll have a short message. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for all the blessings you give us, God. God, just knowing that you are with us, God, in difficult times is a big comfort, God. I just pray, God, for the people in our church, the God that are shut in and can't have visitors, God. I just pray that you would give them comfort, God, and just give them peace, Lord. And I pray for the ones that's in the hospital, God, that their family can't come visit. I just pray for them and their family, God. God, that you would just accompany them during these struggling times. And I pray, God, for the lost. God, I pray that this here would just bring people to their knees, God. If it would help them find you, it would be a good thing, Lord. And I just pray that you remember the lost in our town. And I pray, God, that you continue, continue to protect our community, Lord, from this virus. God, I pray that you just put a hedge around it. God, protect our church, our family, and friends, God. And God, we just owe everything to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's lesson, I've got a question for you. Um, my question is for each one of you is what do you control? Have you ever just thought about that? Do you control your health? Maybe you think, do you control your children, those of you that have children? And even more so than that, something that's so simple, can you control your thoughts? You know, have you ever just thought about it this way? What if they had a screen over your head? Would you be willing to go to church and let them play your thoughts from the past three days? And would you ask the question, where in the world did that come from? I've had to ask myself before. You just, there's hardly nothing we control when you boil right down to it. If you're like me, there's not much we can control. But anyway, Today, I'm going to start out with some scripture here. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, and it's interesting, it's right here, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But right behind that verse, the very next verse, verse 34, reads, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take care of thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We don't even control the day we're in. And then another verse taking it a step further, Proverbs 27, one. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Um, do you think that God finds it humorous when we try to tell him about our plans for the future? Have you ever just thought about that? We're always making plans. We might make a plan to go fishing Saturday, but we don't know if it'll rain. We don't even know if we'll be here. But we're always wanting to make plans. We're always wanting to have some control in our life. Uh, and I want you to just think about this, put it in perspective. Just three and a half months ago, I will bet that, that for you, those of you that fill out New Year's resolutions, how many of you put on your list, I need to get more toilet paper and paper towels? Did any of you put that on the list? I don't think you had any thought of that. And now it seems that toilet paper is more valuable than gold. People, you know, they're just running and grabbing it all off the shelves and getting everything. And yes, things have changed. This whole world changed with this virus that's came and you know, some things that I would just bring to mention about that. Uh, first of all, um, you can't even go to a restaurant and sit down and eat. You can't go to a movie with your wife. Um, you can't even go to the hospital to visit your family. You can't go to the nursing home to see your loved ones or your family there. This is very tough for them and for you. 
Uh, we never dreamed we would see a day when it was like that, where they shut businesses up and people had to go home for fear of catching the virus. But even more so than that, you can't even go to church with your family and your friends. Um, I just can't even imagine that I would ever hear a day. You know, there's countries where they're forced where they can't go to church, but here we've imposed this for protection that we can't go to church. But let me tell you what we can control. One thing, thank the Lord, that we can control is our personal relationship with God. Mm. Even when we're away from church, God is there, he is waiting. And we have time and, and, and there's nothing greater than being able to speak to God at any time we want to with freedom. He's there for us, we can read his word, we can gain wisdom from his word, we can draw our relationship closer to him and he can give us peace through any situation that this world can throw at us because he has overcome the world. And thank God for that. And uh, so, something that when I think about God, I think about the word says he is the same today. He was the same yesterday and he will be the same tomorrow. He was here before the virus, during the virus and after the virus and nothing changed. You know, God is in control of the little things and the big things in our life. I think one of the hard things for us, and I, I'll just give an example where I work at, uh, work at FNB South, and I'm always dealing with people's financial statements. And when you take the financial statement, on the left side is the assets, on the right side is the liabilities things they're indebted to. But when you look at that left side, the top has cash on hand. You know, a lot of people can look at that and check their bank account and they can try to find security in maybe the money they have. But in reality, that money is on loan, it's God's. Right up under that, it has vehicles, uh, automobiles, you know, that they possess, that vehicle's not gonna last forever. You might have a brand new car today, but next year it won't be new. And the year after that, it'll be even worse. Uh, the things of this world just does not last. The only thing that lasts is, is God. And here's something that I've often thought about in my life. When we fill out that financial statement, have you ever thought about the greatest asset we have is not even listed on it. And that is our relationship with God. The thing about our relationship with God, for any of you Christians that's had prayers answered, it can be just the most real thing. There's no way you can explain it to somebody, but God touches you in a way where you know that he is not only there, but he was for you. And he meant all things for our good. And when we take into consideration the value of that, the greatest asset I say that man has, my question for myself, and I'm speaking to me and you're listening, but the question is, and you can ask yourself, if we truly understand the power of that asset, why do we not use it more often than we do? Why do we forget about it and tuck it away sometimes and try to pull up when we need it, when it is the greatest thing for all of our life's problems, all of our needs, all of our worries, all of our burdens can be taken to him in prayer. And I just want you to just put some time and thought in that. And the thing about it, we as Christians, during these times, we can have an awareness of his personal presence with us at all times. He's with me right now as we're sitting here. And I hope he is speaking to you wherever you are at home or whatever you're doing right now. I hope you take time to reflect on him. And one thing I would really like to ask of our people in the church during this time, a lot of you is out of work on Sundays, you know, we have time in this, in this uh, stay in, 
laws that we have, it's giving us time. We're spending time with our families, we're doing, there's probably kitchens that's getting cooked in that haven't been cooked in in years. And thank God for that, because I do like to eat. And you know, I thought about that on the, uh, um, the distance roll of six feet. The one I'm having the most trouble with is my refrigerator. But uh, I think we're gonna be all right with that. We are working on it, it's staying right here and I'm glad it's not leaving me. But anyway, I would like to ask all the ones in our church while we got time, extra time at home. You know, prayer is better together. First of all, God's word says, where two or more gather together, I will be in your midst. So just think, with all of us in the church with extra time, just imagine what could happen if we all begin to pray for God's will for the lost. Can you imagine? And I'm going to read this here, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, the thing about God and his will for us, when he sent his son to die on that cross to pay for my sins and forgive me, and I have plenty that I need forgiveness for. And um, when he done that, he didn't just do that for me. He didn't just do that for you. He done it for everyone. And it is the free gift that he offers us. And I just can't imagine right now, with all this trouble in this world, people that don't know the Lord, how they can have any comfort. I just would like to pray that, that if you know a lost person during this time, that you would pray God's will in their life, that his word would touch them, he would reveal himself to them, and they could come to know him, their Savior. And you know, some things that I would like to suggest you could do, you think, well, what can I do? We're stuck at home, we can't go visit people. Everybody has a phone. We can call them and encourage them. Let them know that we love them. Just check on them and, you know, let them know that we're thinking about them and offer anything we can do. The second thing you can do is write a card, a word of encouragement, and share some scripture with them. You know, you think about it, this word right here, is not just paper with words on it. This word is the living word of God. If you sin, a lot of people don't understand the power of this word. When you send this scripture to people and they read God's word, it's nothing that you did. This word speaks to them. This word is real. You would be amazed at uh, the people that's probably been saved. I'll say this right here. When I got saved, I was 27 years old. And it wasn't because anybody came to my house. I had been in church my whole life. I was at home alone. And I was really down, something was missing. And I went in, and, I, and I'm and i gonna say this, I actually thought that I was saved in a, in a sense in my feeble mind just because I'd been in church my whole life. My father and my mother had me there every Sunday, and you know, I, I thought, well, I'm not that bad a person. I, you know, I'm probably okay. The problem was I was lost. But that night, I'm just gonna tell you how powerful this word is. I was troubled, and I opened my Bible to Psalm 77. I did not turn there, I just opened my Bible, and there it was, so that's the place I began to read. And God just changed my life that night. He just overwhelmed me. I hardly made it three verses. And, uh, you know, and the way I could say that, I can't say that I was seeking God or looking anything right that moment, but he made himself real to me. And I realized what I was. And I changed my ways. And I just want everyone to know that God loves you. You have not done anything that he can't forgive you of. Jesus went to that cross and he took the beating and the pounding and all the weight of all the sin of all of us and he done that so we wouldn't have to. 
And the second thing that I would like to ask you while we're here that you would pray for. You know, these times are troubling for us that's used to work and maybe we've got the doors closed and we're not seeing all the people we've seen. But can you imagine the people that's living alone? And I'm speaking to you, if you're at home by yourself, God is still with you and he's still for you. And you know, it's hard to have visitors because of the danger for these people, the, the elderly or the people that maybe have some illness. It's hard for people to come visit you. And, I, and I'm praying they call. But I want to leave you with this word here in God's word for all of us. And this is so powerful to me. And I think about somebody that's lonesome. I think about somebody that's troubled. That's maybe in a valley in their life. And you know, as long as we on this world, God said that this world would have its tribulations and trials. None of us would get away from that. That's until that day we're called home to live in eternity with him. But I'm going to read Isaiah 41, 13. And it's such a beautiful illustration of what God can do. It says, for the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. What greater comfort is that that we have a God that will take our hand like a parent would a child when we're scared or we have fear, and he says, I will help thee. That is such a comforting thing to know, and I would just like to encourage you all, let's pray together for them two things, the loss and the shut-in. And I thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. And you know, I always wondered when I started teaching, I said, I wonder how long I'll have to teach before nobody comes to my class. And I guess I made it today. But I love you, and y'all have a good day.